5,000 years ago. Somewhere off the coast of West Australia was an event that triggered an Indian Ocean mega tsunami, crashing enormous waves into the coast of West Australia, dislocating huge boulders and leaving a wave of sand meters deep and kilometers wide across the entire prehistoric West Australian coastline. Today I explore the two large rocks on the beach at the Perth northern suburb of Two Rocks, 50 kilometers to the north of the Perth CBD, wondering just exactly how this suburb got its name. One of the original sources of evidence for a Western Australian mega tsunami comes from an exploration of displaced granite boulders found along the coast, especially around the southwest Cape to Cape region, the most impressive of which is Merchant Rock at Boronup, an area featured in future episodes. This rock is a huge granite boulder, split in two in the recent geological past, with a dislocation of nearly two meters. Wind and storm action is just not capable of this type of displacement, and the only viable explanation is a tsunami. To quote from the original scientific paper on the subject, Holocene Paleo Tsunami History of Western Australia, the southwestern coast of Western Australia, from Cape Natural East to Albany, also shows signs of impact by extreme waves. Here, huge granite boulders, 80 to 400 tonnes, were dislocated and transported to heights up to 10 metres above sea level. When I arrived at Two Rocks for the first time, I was hoping these rocks might also be displaced granite boulders but the quickest of glances at the rocks shows these are not granite, but are composed of the local country rock called Tamala limestone. Even if these rocks were displaced by a tsunami wave, there is no evidence that could remain now. Instead, these rocks mark what was likely a limestone ridge or an outcrop, similar to many such rock formations along the coast of Western Australia, the Swan River estuary, and some of the offshore islands. Tamala limestone is geologically very recent in origin. The oldest rocks are dated to around 1.8 million years ago, and the most recent are as young as just 140,000 years in age. Tamala limestone not only underlies the Perth metro region, but is one of the longest continuous rock formations on planet Earth, covering almost the entire Indian Ocean coastline of Western Australia. Despite the fact that this is called limestone, to me, this more closely fits the definition of a sandstone. The origin of this rock, though, is said to be aeolian or windblown in nature. Sand particles were blown into the region during long, deep ice ages over many millennia, and were consolidated and lithified into a solid rock by the percolation of water. The sea level during this period was often much lower than present, exposing wide tracts of continental shelf with an abundance of sand during a much colder and drier epoch. Sand dunes built up for millennia along the Western Australian coast, which over time then lithified into this Tamala limestone. Here is the same rock formation at Cotterslow, the closest beach to the Perth CBD, and also here on the banks of the Swan River, and on Rottnest Island where the youngest Tamala limestone has been tentatively dated to just 140,000 years ago. Very generally, the further inland to the east, the older the Tamala limestone rocks are likely to be. The same Tamala limestone formation also underlies the southwest Cape to Cape region. Here, the limestone country rock sits on top of the exposed granite bedrock, which is now found just above current sea level. Additionally, if there are any granite boulders on limestone anywhere, they can only have been moved by a tsunami. At Lewin and Boronup, the limestone is at an elevation of up to 225 meters above sea level. 
This region is also home to multiple caves within the Tamala limestone. Caves of this size form geologically relatively quickly, but the deposits in the caves have formed over millennia. This gives a minimum age for the entire rock formation to be just a little older than the older stalactites, although in this region the dating evidence for the rocks is not absolutely clear. Back to two rocks, and whilst the rocks themselves do not show any direct tsunami evidence, sand dunes just inland show multiple tsunami deposit features. Google Earth clearly shows a wave splash zone with multiple overlapping dunes. Stay tuned because future episodes will come from this exact location. The last location in this episode is on the northern bank of the Swan River at Dalkeith. The Tamala limestone here is recently exposed and therefore shows little weathering. The Aeolian sand dune origin of the rock though is clearly visible in the multiple waves and layers right there in the rock face. West Australia is tectonically very stable. Unlike geologically active regions uh, such as Cascadia on the Pacific Northwest coast of the USA and Canada, or even like the British Isles, which still shows signs of isostatic uplift since the end of the last ice age, the coast of Western Australia in relation to the rest of the planet crust has been stable for millions of years. Any differences in the relative height of the sea level along Western Australia therefore have to show a global change in sea level. The currently accepted view of Tamala limestone is that it formed the landward deposition of sand particles blown off the exposed continental shelf during ice ages where the sea level was much lower than today. This type of deposition is usually indicative of a desert sand environment and it results in the formation of usually a red sandstone. This is the type of rock that underlies the region where I grew up in northwest England. The whole region is covered by what's called the new red sandstone. The grains and particles evident in the Tamala limestone are very similar to the sandstone deposits that I've studied in the northwest of England. So what makes Tamala a limestone and not a sandstone? Limestone is the source of rock that we expect to be deposited only in an aquatic environment. To me, Tamala limestone appears to be a sandstone with a limestone matrix holding the grains together. Note also that Aeolian sand deposits consist of fine particles only. Seashells are simply not transported uphill by the wind, which makes this outcrop very interesting. It's a layer of bivalves in a coarse concretion matrix with standard aeolian deposited layers immediately above and immediately below the various shell layers. These shell layers can only have been deposited by water. There is simply no other way for a layer of shells to appear in West Australian Tamala limestone. Of course, this could mean that the origin of Tamala limestone is not actually a, a landward wind-blown sand, or could actually be a, a water lane deposit. But if the current view of Tamala limestone being a land-based aeolian-blown sand dune formation, then these shell deposits and shell layers are something of an outlier. We're looking at either a global interglacial period, which raised sea levels to a level above where they are right now and then immediately put them back down again to ice age levels so that the continental shelf is exposed and the sand can blow onto the land again or these shell layers got here in some other way. The worldwide global geological record does indicate one time period in the last million years when global sea levels were higher than present. That was at 400,000 years ago. The rock strata here, however, has dune levels immediately above and immediately below the shell layers. 
So a gradual sea level rise to this level would have likely disrupted the dry land deposits and washed the sand dunes away, and therefore the Tamala limestone would not have formed. Or each of these shell layers could represent an ancient Indian Ocean mega tsunami. In fact, the entire existence of the Tamala limestone as a limestone requires inundation by seawater. Therefore, the Tamala limestone could owe its very existence to ancient tsunamis washing in seawater and bringing with them a layer of shells. Interesting thought. In the next episode, we look at Indian Ocean evidence for a possible source of West Australian mega tsunami events, and spoiler alert, there is no such thing as the Burkle Crater. Stay tuned!